Ohio. You go far enough back with the Femmes, and you're going to have a great time. So if you want to go see him, the show is Monday, October the 9th at the Masonic Temple. Info, tickets, everything else, MasonicCleveland.com. Two for the Violent Femmes. Good luck. Call 10 216 or 800-348-1007. Voice call received. Put this on the air, dumbass. You think you know it all? You're just nothing but a piece of shit. Talk about dumb shit that you don't have a clue about. Another satisfied customer of the Alan Cox Show. I hate it. This show sucks. On 100.7 WMMS. <laughs> Stop. Five one nine two. If you want to send me a text for something, if you want to watch live, you can do it at alancockshow.com. With the assistance of Lubba the Monkey today. <laughs> and um, he was a running back for the Oilers back in the day, right? Bill's going to be talking to Tyler Stewart of the Bare Naked Ladies here in a few minutes. They are doing a show on Friday night out at uh, Blossom with Delamitri and Five for Fighting. Are they all Canadian bands? I don't know. I I just remember Five for Fighting had like one hit. It was like a guy who took a band out with him. And um, no, he's from L.A. And then uh, Delamitri had uh, a handful of hits. And they are Scottish. They're from Glasgow. They have one of my favorite songs, which is Roll Roll to to Me. me. It's so fun. It's like two minutes long. It's a great song. It's so fun. Yeah. That's my karaoke song that's for me. No one else likes it. But it's like two minutes. So I'm like, even if you're not having a good time, it, I, it actually might be under two minutes. What, what song? Roll to, Roll to Me. Roll to Me. Oh, yeah. It's so fun. That's like... Uh, it's 2.08. Yeah, it's, it's like real it's short. It's barely two minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. a good song. Out of My Mind by Fastball's Mind. Out of My Mind by Fastball. That's a good one. Yeah, it's it's one verse in the chorus three times. Like yeah. that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, Delamitri just right, to come ahead. Completely yeah. made up a uh, couple of words. People are like, "Ooh, what does it mean?" They're like, "Nothing. Made it up." Mm-hmm. But um, this says best known for their single "Nothing Ever Happens." I would think "Roll to Me." I would think so too. I've never heard "Nothing Ever Happens." Um, but yeah, two minutes of Delamitri. Well, Gonna see him at Blossom on Friday night, along with the Baronica Lady. Play that, uh, the one that they're mo- supposedly most known for. Nothing ever happens? Yeah. Let me see if Let's I can see find if I recognize it. it. Yeah. Post office clocks put up no. sing position closed. No one knows. Maybe this, song. this was a huge hit for them in the UK. Maybe. Roll to me though was absolutely their biggest hit over here. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, and then Five for Fighting. Five for Fighting had a song called Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was their big one. And then of course, um, well, I can play a Bare Naked Ladies' best song. It's been. So uh, Friday night is going to be. The, is that a sold out show? Do we know? I don't know. I thought you said it was Pavilion only. It might be. Oh, really? I think it is. I, I would think Bare Naked Ladies could sell out Blossom. Am I stupid in thinking that? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Really? I don't You're think so they stupid. could do that anymore. <laughs> Such a stupid idiot. <laughs> I was reading an article. Jacoby Shaddix is the longtime frontman for Papa Roach. And when they first got going, they were young men, and they were out there to make some noise. And he called himself Kobe Dick because that was a cool name, man. But he started going by Jacoby Shaddix. He got clean, started a family, whatever. And some people are giving him a hard time because he said that Korn and his band Papa Roach and Deftones are all going to be the new Metallicas. And I assume that he means that they will have uh, careers of longevity like Metallica. And I don't think these are all bands, by the way, that have been around a long time now. Papa Roach is awesome live. I have a very good time. Like, I know it's kind of corny butt rock, but... Every time I've seen them live, they put on an awesome show. I, the most recent time I saw them was pre-pandemic. I saw them at Sonic Temple. 
and they were good. But I remember when I was out in Pittsburgh 20 years ago, there was this big, there, there's a part of Pittsburgh on the river that's called um, Station Square. And it's a whole bunch of nightclubs and it's restaurants and all, it's all kinds of stuff. It's where the, the Cleveland Funny Bone was, if you guys ever performed there. Uh, called Station Square, and when I, I used to do a bunch of um, uh, club appearances and Pittsburgh things like that. Pittsburgh Funny Bone. What did I say? Cleveland. Cleveland. I'm sorry. Yes, Pittsburgh Funny Bone. Yeah. Jeff Schneider's joint, yeah, yeah. and um, there was a massive club there called Rock Jungle, and I could never figure out how they kept the lights on because you know I would host like college night and stuff like that, and it was just nuts to butts. It was packed, but the rest of the time. Not so much. But Papa Roach, my station had Papa Roach come in in, like, the earliest days of Papa Roach. This would have been, like, 2001, maybe. And Papa Roach played at this place called Rock Jungle. Not a big stage. They were awesome. And I didn't think much of them at the time. And then I saw them, and I was like, these guys are great. Now, I would have never thought they would have been around 20 years later. But they were great. Of course, come to find out that the club, the owner, was using it to launder money for an interstate heroin ring. That idiot. And so that's how that club, you know, there are some places you go to and you go, there's no way that this is not a front for criminal activity. Because whether it's a nightclub or a restaurant of some kind or a retail establishment, you're like, there's no way that they are generating enough revenue to stay open minus some nefarious thing. So no shock that this guy ended up going to jail. He owned a couple of clubs in the Pittsburgh area, and both of them were money laundering operations. They were running a, like a regional heroin ring that was getting piped in from New Jersey, and he was using these clubs to launder the money. But Papa Roach was a high point at that time, but Jacoby Shaddix is like, bands like mine and Corn and Deftones are the next Metallica's. My thought is you're not going to have the next Metallicas because the whole thing is kind of fragmented and that's not really, you know, Foo Fighters is kind of like your last great arena rock band. But Papa Roach has been around a long time. They're coming through, um, they're doing Blossom with on that Shinedown show. Spirit Box and Papa Roach are opening up for Shinedown in a couple, uh, beginning of September out of Blossom. And you figure Linkin Park's done. You know, they had a huge run. System of a Down, I mean, they don't really do anything anymore. But uh, you could do a hell of a lot worse than Corn and Papa Roach and Deftones. But again, these are all bands that have been around for 30 years now. 25, 30 years. So, um, whatever. They have got, at least for Corn, they have gotten to the... the you get to that point in your career if you're long enough to have a... a some longevity where you move into like the merch phase of your career. Like corn has got like a cosmetics line and mm -hmm. <laughs> corn oh. cosmetics with a, yeah, also with a K. I don't know about that, but <clears throat> something like that. Yeah. Like Jonathan Davis has got a line of, I don't know, come some kind of eyeshadows or I don't know what it is, but uh, listen, God bless him. You got to find new and exciting ways to get people to pay attention to whatever it is that you're doing, especially if you're not touring a lot. You can buy corn coffee. Spell with a K. I don't. I don't know what it tastes like, and I don't know why. You know, if you're a fan of the band, you go. You know what? I like their music. I bet I'm gonna love their coffee. And they have corn hot sauce. I love their music. I bet they can make a really good hot sauce. I don't know if people think that way. Corn Cosmetics. There it is. It comes in a CD case, and it is a CD-shaped round palette of eyeshadows. So there's Pretty all... cool. You know, I don't think Metallica is selling hot sauce. I don't know. Th those guys are... You know, they're all multi, multi, multi millionaires. By the way, somehow the Pirates managed to avoid the sweep. Yes, they did. And they beat uh, the Guardians last minute. Seven to five is the final there. Guardians still trying to get to 500. And they'll take tomorrow night off. And then they're back here at home on Friday to start up the weekend series against the Phillies. 
Let's listen to Bill talk to bare naked ladies, shall we? All right. More than six, but fewer than ten minutes. With somebody on the phone. This is a few weeks back. They they hit me up and they're like, want to talk to bare naked ladies. And I hit Bill up. I said, you love these guys. You should talk to them. And so that's what happened. You talked to the drummer. Yeah. Tyler Stewart. Yeah. Is that his name? Yes. Hey, Tyler, uh, this is Bill Squire, and I am so excited to talk to you today. Oh, thanks, Bill. Uh, what a pleasure. I've been a fan since the, the mid-90s. My older brothers got me into you guys, uh, and, and I've been a fan ever since. And I think it's so cool that you guys are doing the seventh iteration of this Last Summer on Earth tour. I had kind of a renaissance with you guys over the last year because my girlfriend and I watch a lot of the show Community, and there's a scene where they're talking about Bare Naked Ladies, and... We were quoting that, and then we just started listening to you guys all the time. And so as soon as the tickets went on sale, we're like, we got to go see them. Well, that's great. I, I, you know, I have an inside scoop on that. Community and Big Bang Theory were kind of like competitors, right, for viewers. And since we had the, the theme song for Big Bang Theory, I think it was kind of a, a little bit of a jab at us, but it was like a, a friendly jab. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, writers and comedians who are fans of Bare Naked Ladies. In terms of you know, knowledge of the band amongst that kind of group. But it's pretty high. So I think it was kind of a, an inside jab by the by the writers of one show at another show. And I, I, I couldn't be happier. I loved that scene. It's such a great scene. And I love all the little places that you guys have been woven into pop culture and, and television and movies. Uh, another one that always comes to mind is the scene in The Sopranos where Meadow is like, where's my Bare Naked Lady CD? That scene has always stuck with me. I'm like, I wonder if Meadow's listening to the whole CD or she's just listening to one week. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, it, it, it's amazing how much, how one week is woven itself in. Like, you know, Stephen Colbert said, now let's play the national anthem of Canada. And it's, yeah, it's been. You know? <laughs> and uh, it's, so, it's so funny. And then it's been a family guy. And, uh, and then, and what's that one... You ever seen what we do in the shadows? Yes, yes. The vampires were trying to prove that they were human <laughs> by knowing all the words to one week. That's like, incredible. That's hilarious. that's got to feel so good, especially because you guys are, you know, you, do, you you have a lot of humor in your music and especially in your live performances. So to have shout outs on shows that are comedic in nature and, and you know, Stephen Colbert and all these different things. That's got to feel like some nice pat on the back to be like, okay, they, they like our music, but they also understand that we're funny guys that are, are, you know, up here having a good time. We take our music serious, but we don't take ourselves too serious. That's exactly right, man. That's very astute. Um, we're obviously all big fans, too, of, of smart comedy, of, of great shows. And, you know, over the years, you've had the pleasure of uh, working with some of these people. And it's great because we ultimately... I think up here in Canada, it's a big country, but there's not that many people in it. So, you know, we have a, a surplus of these funny and talented people. Often they end up migrating to the States or, or working in the States like we do all the time. Um, but it sure, it, it sure is nice to have that sense of, like, Canadian community, even amongst, uh, you know, Hollywood and and even, even Broadway and places like that. It's, it's really cool. Well, growing up, we had one of those big old-fashioned satellite dishes, so we got a lot of uh, CBC stations, and we watched uh, feeds from that. So I was always really aware of Kids in the Hall and then also just, you know, much music and all these different Canadian things. Some of my favorite comedians of all time and musicians are, are Canadian, so your guys' export, like you said, it's not a huge country, but the amount of talented musicians and comedians and actors that have come out of Canada is pretty astounding for the population. I would agree with that. And, you know, it's interesting that you're at WMMS and, and you guys were really responsible for the breakout of, uh, of our good friends Rush back in the day. I think, you know, you're one of the first stations in America to play Rush on the radio. Yeah, I watched that documentary about Rush and, and that was such a cool thing. You know, I've been at this station for 10 years now. But being part of that history is is overwhelmingly uh, incredible. Now I know you guys you guys kind of have your set list ready to go for this tour. You uh you guys got a lot of new stuff. I've been digging into the playlist that you have on all the different streaming apps where you can 
preview what exact not exactly what's going to be played at each show, but you know, kind of get familiar with some of the newer stuff, which I've been really digging. But also at the end of each show, you get out from behind the drum kit and you you belt some songs and. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Well, if, if it goes according to the discussions of the last few days. I am a drummer who's very fortunate enough to have two arms. Uh, there are some one-armed drummers out there. Oh. One in particular is pretty uh. popular. So you never know what kind of... Uh, I, I get what you're laying down. to that band. <laughs> 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 so we'll, we'll see. We'll see, man. You know, I love being able to to do that, just, you know, bust out of my rusty cage and surprise people with, uh, you know, some rock and vocals. Uh, it's, it's definitely become a highlight of the show for the guys too, because we all switch up instruments and, uh, you know, we, we get a chance to shine in different ways and it's a, it's a surprise, you know, it's very unexpected. And also you have a very, like you can tell that you've been sitting behind the drums and you want to use the whole stage when you get out in front of everybody because you are not just standing there singing. You are all over the place. And as a, a guy that is also a little bit of larger carriage, uh, I love seeing a big guy move. It's just there's something about it that's, that there's nothing like it. You know, seeing Mick Jagger up there, like, of course you can do that. You're skinny. If you got a little bit of a, a, a gut and you're moving around, that's when it's impressive. That's when you're like, all right, this is what he should have been doing all along. Well, it's all an homage to Chris Farley at the end of the day, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you have to take care of yourself. Um, the biggest thing I find is you got to take care of your voice. And, you know, if you're going out after shows or, or you know, drinking alcohol or eating too late at night, getting acid reflux, whatever, um, you know, you, you can you can damage your vocal cords. So that's one of the things I've learned over the years is to try to rest your voice as much as possible. But also, you know, get enough sleep, get some exercise. What I've seen online on, on YouTube and stuff of your guys' live performance, it, it just looks like a blast. It just looks like it, it, everyone's having so much fun and, and they're, you're singing along and you're laughing. And I, I can't wait to, to check you guys out this summer. Oh, thanks, man. Well, you know, having those other bands out with us, too, is a great thing because, you know, that's like 30 years of radio hits packed into those groups. It's a great lineup, and it's just going to be so much fun. And that's going to be, again, uh, July 21st at Blossom in uh, Cuyahoga Falls. Yeah, man, second last show of the tour. Yes. So, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be a well-oiled machine by that point. Is there a song... Fun that you wish you could pull off uh, when you're doing, you know, when you step out from behind the kit that you can't pull off? Is there one that you can think of that, like, you wish you could just hit those notes, but you can't? Well, man, you know, if we could do, like, a full version of Bohemian Rhapsody, that would be amazing. That would be insane. I would love that. That would be um, fantastic. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Can't wait to see you. So uh, I don't want to keep you too long, All though. All right, man. Appreciate that. and look forward to seeing you this summer. All right, thanks. Cheers, man. More than six, but fewer than ten minutes With somebody on the floor There's Bill talking to Tyler Stewart, the longtime drummer for Bare Naked Ladies, who are going to be doing a show at Blossom on Friday night, if there are still tickets available. Yeah, there's a few. I don't know there's, where you get them. Live Nation? Or uh, Ticketmaster. 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 I, I mean, I think there's some resale tickets available. I don't know if there's any... Uh, Face value. But. Did you spend four hundred dollars on the VIP package? <laughs> no. Oh, I think I spent about sixty dollars a piece. Yes, sucker. On my ticket. <laughs> but I think I'm in the same section that you were in. <laughs> you think you're gonna get? That's so funny, Jimmy Crickets. What? That's, you that's think right, you're yeah. gonna get a coin and a clear bag spending that kind of money? I'm tired of you guys. Yeah. Got another thing coming, homie. All right, good. Uh, let me take a break here. We're going to have a pound cake sports break a little bit uh, later on for you. I'll have another $1,000 closer to 430 for you to grab 